China's debt diplomacy offensive that stirred up storms in countries across the world has taken a rather softer overtone in Sri Lanka. Though packaged as gestures of charity and goodwill during the holy month of Ramadan, there's an inherent strategic real politic and diplomacy that's actually at work here. Take a look. China courts influence in Sri Lanka via Buddhist clergy. In the Buddhist social-religious sense, the concept is defined as dana, or charity and donation. Thousands of packets of dry rations distributed to underprivileged families via temples and mosques. It's packaged as a gesture of goodwill during Ramadan and Sinhala and Tamil New Year festive seasons. But look closer and the Fashian donation drive, as it's called after the Chinese Buddhist monk, takes on dimensions of geostrategy and real politic. No less than China's ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ki Zhenong, and Sri Lanka's foreign minister, Ali Sabri, were present for the charity event at Colombo's Juma Mosque. And the focus was larger China-Sri Lanka relations. China are long-standing friends. We have historic relationship for a long, long period of time. We have uh, stood for each other in both uh, regionally and internationally. And we are very grateful, like always, China has stood with Sri Lanka in difficult times. For 70 years, we have had excellent relationship, starting with the rubberized pact. So it is the solidarity which has been shown here. Now the, the, the great latest project, seven temples in China had got together and brought a lot of relief to the people of Sri Lanka. Extend the idea to soft diplomacy as a relatively recent instrument of Chinese foreign policy. It uses societal and economic distress as a favourable environment to deepen a political footprint, extending into multiple spheres over the past few months. The first batch of school uniforms came in January this year. Some 9 million metres of fabric came to several provinces over multiple batches. In mid-March, the Chinese embassy donated material for production of policial uniforms. And now a more direct Buddhist to Buddhist diplomacy, this is not just food donation, but politics in a charitable guise. While China's long-standing ties with Sri Lanka appeared to be a little frayed, especially over the last year, it appears so that China is now once again extending a helping hand to Sri Lanka in terms of donation and aid. However, Sri Lanka still awaits a solid plan in terms of how and when debt restructuring with China will take place. Post the Rajapaksa ouster, Beijing's Sri Lanka debt diplomacy plans have been in disarray, with a less compliant government in office in Colombo. This softer people outreach under the name of the ancient traveller Farshin are an effort to alter the vacuum. Another organisation, the Sri Lanka-China Buddhist Friendship Association, works along a similar line. Call it diplomacy by religious means. China, however, rejects this idea. China acts in accordance with market laws and international rules, respects the will of relevant countries, has never forced any party to borrow money, has never forced any country to pay, will not attach any political conditions to loan agreements and does not seek any political self-interest. The fact is, the Chinese debt diplomacy idea also ties in with the bigger picture. China's investments in over 150 countries, most of them underdeveloped, have looked to paint it as the Good Samaritan. And inroads made have ranged from outright damaging to effects that certainly cannot be played down.